you know, big announcements or big things going on. And there's a couple things here on this uh, Wednesday morning, December 11th. So we'll divide it into the five-minute morning, and then we'll get into the Yankee news. The five-minute morning is dedicated to the uh, craziness, and that's the word, that is swirling around both the Giants and the Jets right now. It's been a bad season for both. I'll deal with the Jets first. The idea that you can have a star running back, a player you hope would be the one of the building blocks that you could build around, and have him show up in organization the way he did by being out, as we know the story is now, and then not playing the next day and being out maybe as late as one in the morning the night before. Makes the franchise look so weak. Makes the franchise look uh, just so disorganized and, and, and really so weak in every aspect that it's said. And then to hear that the organization is not going to reprimand the player. I mean, I can't think of some of the executives I've known in sports and in football how they would have responded, whether I'm talking about head coaches or general managers, how they would have responded to a player who showed up his organization and made them look as powerless as Bell has made the Jets look. And then to have the head coach stand up there and say he won't be reprimanded and that it's kind of a bad optic. Kind of a bad optic? It basically says there is no accountability in your franchise. Then you have the Giants. And we saw another, another typical Giant game. No adjustments. The other team makes countless adjustments at halftime. Giants have a game under control, and they will lose it in the second half. And again, listless, just badly organized defense, play after play. The Eagles had one player that they could go to in the fourth quarter of that game. They were down to nothing wide receivers. You knew, everybody knew, anybody watching the game, a person who knows little about the sport knew that it, it, you had to occupy and, without any question, take their star tight end out of the game on every single down. That's where they were going to go. You had to make that an option they could not go to. Just like you try to do that with Edelman with the Pats, you had to do this with Ertz the other night. And instead, not only is he targeted 13 times and catch nine passes, but as they got their offense going, he was there for every big play and the last two touchdowns. And then to watch Shermer handle the final minute the way he did, letting that time run off the clock instead of giving himself a chance to play in the fourth quarter with a team that is weaker, on the road, and now facing an offense that's got its game going, to try and play under those conditions and look to play to overtime instead of having a chance to win it in regulation, which they had a chance to do, shows you how clueless he is as a coach. And then to hear Ogletree say the next day, and on the fans, so give the fan credit for that, give the interviewers credit for that, for Ogletree to say, that they were not prepared for the final play of the game and not prepared down the stretch of that game on defense, seeing things that they had never seen before, not prepared for a star tight end who was their only option, shows you just how badly coached this team is. On one hand, you have the badly organized, dysfunctional, Jets who have no accountability for their players. On the other side, you have the Giants who are clueless from top to bottom and are so badly prepared and so badly coached, it has become actually hard for Giant fans to watch. You have to implore both owners to find some people who can run these franchises because you can't trade the owners. And right now, the people running the franchises don't have an idea what they're doing. And that's why losing has become the only mainstay in football in this town for years now. Now on to a team that does understand victory and a team that shows you 
how different they approach it than these other teams in this town that fall over themselves and never win. Say what you want about this Yankee contract, and I'll say a lot. And I'm talking, of course, about the Yankees. The Yankees signing Cole to a nine-year, $300-plus million deal, 324 to be exact. Nine years, $324 million, an astounding contract. But here are the Yankees who have won 100 games the past two years. Here are the Yankees who never, ever, ever have a losing season. Here are the Yankees, though, who are highly frustrated because they have not been back to the World Series in a decade feeling a sense of accountability, feeling completely compelled and going out and doing what needs to be done not to ensure that they'll win a championship because you can't do that. You can guarantee yourself 100 wins. You can't guarantee yourself you're going to win in the postseason. That still takes some clutch. That still takes some two-out hits. That still takes some big outs. And you don't know if you're going to get those till you get there. Cole doesn't guarantee them a championship. He guarantees them that they'll be the favorites to win a championship. But there's a couple of things I want to get to here. Number one, and I'm sure you hear a bunch of this later in the day in different places once I put it up. Number one, big picture. The idea that the MLBPA would even think of talking about collusion anymore is absolutely laughable, so drop that. All we've heard the last couple of years is collusion. Check out these contracts. Now talk collusion. So that's gone. Number two, The Yankees, coming off another frustrating postseason, were going to make a big move. They did this. My understanding is a big player in this was Andy Pettit. So if you're a Yankee fan today and you have an ear to ear grin because Cole agreed to take your money rather than the Angel money or the Dodger money, you have another reason to like Andy Pettit even more. Because I guarantee you, from what I understand, he had, from people who know, he had a big hand in this. They got a guy who. You cannot knock. A wonderful performer who is known for preparing, who wants to be with the big team, who wants to be in the big place, who wants to take the pressure, who wants to be the man. You like everything you hear about Cole. When I watched Cole pitch at Yankee Stadium on a day he had nothing, I sat right behind the plate and watched him battle and battle and battle. And when he had put his five innings in and he had a lead, he could have left. And I've seen plenty of big-time pitches led by Greg Maddox who would have Bailed out of that game after five innings. He went out there and pitched and pitched and pitched and showed you what kind of competitor he is. I have no knock on Cole. But this is an insane contract, one that will come back in later years. So it better be really good for these next five years, and the Yankees better get a couple of titles out of it because they are going to pay mightily for the fact that they owe Cole, who has earned it, and Stanton, who was a ridiculous signing. They will owe them between the years of... 18 and 29, 2018 and 2029, they will pay those two guys $674 million. The later years of the Cole contract, the later years of the Stanton contract will absolutely shankle the Yankees with bad money. There's no way around that. Cole won't have nine good years in him. Maybe he has five and it would be a good contract. Maybe he has seven and it's an astounding contract. He will not have nine. There'll be some dead money on the back of that contract, which you understand. Just like there's going to be dead money, you just hope it isn't all dead money on the Stanton contract going forward. See, the Yankees got Stanton for nothing except money, but money matters. Money matters. Because you only have so much of it, even the Yankees, and it matters. They have huge contracts coming up. Judge is going to get a huge contract. Torres, if he stays here, is going to get a huge contract. There are others who are going to come and get big contracts, and the Yankees are going to have an astronomical payroll. Yankee fans, you don't care. You want to win. The Yankees just took a big step towards winning. But remember, they have mortgaged the back end of the next decade for 2020 and 2021 and 2022. So these better be championship years.